Joey and Mandy, everything divorce related. We can put the S back in your ex appeal. Joey and Mandy, the friends you didn't know you needed on my ex appeal and everything divorce podcast. Hi guys, welcome to my ex appeal, your everything divorce podcast. My name is Joey Camaro and I'm here with Mandy Baker. And we are the friends that you didn't know you needed. We are so excited today, Mandy. We, we are. We have a guest. We're waiting. Yeah. We have a. We have a guest, a real life guest. I can't even stand it. We are official. She likes us, and she likes us. We don't know that. <laughs> we don't know that. So I'm going to introduce our guest. She's actually a personal friend of ours too, which makes this all the more better. Oh, actually, because she would say yes, because she knows us and she does like us. So that's good. Uh, so Amanda Dewey is on our show today. And Amanda is a, not only a friend, but she's also a fitness professional. And I have a lot of credentials for her because we want to know her street creds, because if she didn't have the credentials, then why would we have her here for today's podcast that we've named the divorce diet, by the way? Agreed. And that is not a good thing. The divorce diet is not a good thing. Uh, but Amanda is a fitness professional. She's also a personal trainer. She's a group fitness instructor. That's how we know her because we all worked together back in the day. Uh, but she, she's more than that because she manages master trainers. She's a master trainer herself, but she also manages master trainers. She hires, develops, and trains master trainers. So that's a big deal in itself. She's also a, she hates this one. She hates this one. A fit influencer, fit fluencer, if you will. Uh, she has a huge following on social media and she has an online company. So she's the CEO of her own online fitness company as well. So we'll say at the end, and we'll also put in our show notes to follow Amanda because you can get some really good tips because the great thing about Amanda in her fitness business is to keep things real, to keep things simple. There's no, it's not, it's not fluff and, and fake when it comes to Amanda. Um, and one, on a personal note, we worked together for a really long time and she just mentioned it before the show, but we were roommates for five days, but we, we, we thought it was about five years because in Vegas, there's no clocks. And so it seems like uh, we were roommates for a long time. So we got to know each other really well. And she taught me how to wind down, which I didn't know that was a thing. Um, and also she is currently in Texas and we just found out neighbors with Mandy and right around the corner. And the fact that I have to say Mandy and Amanda it is my head is spinning first of all. So we have two in Texas up against this one in Massachusetts. So uh, without further ado, welcome Amanda. Hi. Hey there, ladies. I am literally just so beyond excited to be here today. Super honored, super humbled. Um, prepared. <laughs> I brought my sexy voice with me. <laughs> You're welcome for that. I love it. But I'm, I'm just honored to be here today, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, so Amanda, you are a divorcee like us. So we're, so we say we're the friends that you didn't know you needed. So now you're everybody's friend too. the five people that listen to us. Maybe we'll get seven <laughs> now that we have a guest. You could right. bring, if you could bring two people to the table, Amanda, that would be great when this goes right. up. It'd be perfect. Uh, so, so you're a divorcee as well. And now you're since remarried and you have, you're a, a mom of four. And so you're a wife and we were just talking before the show and you have, you go from adult down to elementary school. So you have your hands full at all times. But if we can go back to when you first got divorced, right? And because you're a fitness professional, you probably had a background in all of this. But for anybody who didn't know and don't, they don't understand what could happen to your body. And, and what's going to be cool about this episode as well is that Mandy has a completely different perspective. Amanda and I have talked in the past. We didn't, we didn't go on the divorce diet. The divorce diet isn't something that you go on. It's something that happens to you. Um, I don't think I lost a pound, to be honest with you. Uh, Mandy, because I remember back mm -hmm. then, was real thin, very like a, a stick figure. So, but Amanda, when you were going through it, you, you chose the healthy route, if you will. And do you want to tell us, you know, 
why did you go the healthy route? Well, you know, I got to be honest. Initially, I found fitness and started my career in fitness as my marriage was ending. (laughs) And so it was when I started doing a lot of work on my mindset (laughs) and body. Those two things happened simultaneously for me. Uh, There was an Oprah book club that I joined that was a personal development book. And it was, you know, one of the first like good mind books that I had read. And at the same time, I started, you know, working on my body as well. And those two things went hand in hand. And as those two things started improving, um, everything else was kind of falling apart. So I didn't necessarily initially know that fitness was you know, healthy mindset, healthy body was going to be kind of my savior through divorce, but I'm so grateful that it was. So for me, what was the initial question? What, why you chose the healthy route? What was yeah. the driving force? So, so then when, when the decision was made and it was like, it's over, we're getting a divorce initially, like right away, um, I knew that whether or not, like whatever the future was going to hold for my ex, I knew that my boys, I had two boys, two little boys, they were just two and four, like literally right between their birthdays of being two and four. I knew that they had me. I was, yes, our marriage had failed, I was not going to fail them in any other way. I just was just really had this determined mindset. And to me, even even if it wasn't this conscious, like, and I don't even know that it was conscious, but I knew if I wasn't going to fail them, I had to be okay. I had, and I couldn't fake being okay. I had to really be okay. Mind, like above the shoulders, first and foremost, because if my head wasn't right, I wasn't going to be able to make other good choices. And then that that physical outlet of fitness really helped support my mind being okay. And I knew if I could be okay, I was going to get them through it and and make our life better. I love that. And I love the fact that um, I think with fitness, a lot of people don't understand that those eight hours that you're doing a training, because I think I went through a, a couple of trainings with you, Amanda, during that time. And I didn't know that you were going through your personal struggles. I had no idea. So you hit it well. And I think that when we go through something so heavy, finding that outlet that allows us to escape and pour into others at the same time, you can't concentrate on anything else. When you're teaching a group fitness class, you are in it to win it. That is your 45 minute to help others escape. But it does do us such a great benefit too, because we have to turn our phones on do not disturb so no text messages come through. You can't you can't handle the the shit tornado that we've talked about. You you're you're concentrating on other people which also helps us kind of resettle and get back to that baseline so that we can think clearly to go back to our kids. So I love I love that. I think there's two things that you're really speaking to there that resonate with me both then and still now. One and I you know, I might offend someone with this one but I remember sitting in front of those group X classes, whether it was a training day or whether it was just a regular class on my schedule and getting to the end and knowing for me that that space was my church. Mm -hmm. When I opened those group fitness doors, everything left. There was nothing, there was nothing else. It was a sacred space to me. The moments I was setting up my group X room and then the same thing at the end, like you went through this collective experience together, you know, you get that immediate, obviously you're getting the endorphins and all of, you know, the good chemicals released in your brain, which you so desperately need at that time when, you know, those hits aren't coming, maybe other places, right? And you get obviously a lot of great feedback from your students and your class. And, you know, oftentimes they don't know what you're going through and that's fine. So they share what they're going through with you and you're that safe space for other people I remember not wanting to leave that church space, right? So that's that's one aspect of it. But the other part is, um, I don't know if you guys love Arnold Schwarzenegger as much as I do, but 
you know, his kind of solution for everything. If you're if you're feeling down or feeling lonely or feeling bad about yourself, be useful. It's love that to stay in that victim mentality or that poor me mindset or it's hard to stay in a bad space if you're being useful and being that service to somebody else. And in group fitness, that is 100% what we were doing, right? We are being a service to other people, um, helping them with their life and their fitness. So being useful, I think, too, is just really creates that opportunity to have something good. So speak to, I love I love that because being useful is is something that you feel that gets taken away from you during this time, right? So you, you went into group fitness, but talk to us about some other communities that some other people can belong to who might not, that might not be their thing just yet. Yeah. Right. I, th- I think there's a couple of things that needed to happen for all of us. And I know you guys could speak to this as well, but I was over a thousand miles away from my family. I had only lived over a thousand miles away from my family for five years. So I didn't, and I I didn't have a ton of community, but I had my fitness community and finding that community is critical. There's so many times you're going to want to meet with your mediator or your lawyer or whoever you're working with. And you don't want to drag a two and a four-year-old through some of your ugliest conversations that you're ever going to have. So who are you going to have to take care of your kids? Maybe you're someone who has to re-enter the workforce and you need to go on a job interview. Who's going to help you with your kiddos at that time? Or maybe your day hasn't gone well and you need a good cry. What community are you going to turn to? So maybe for some people it is church. Maybe for some people it is going to be you know, their group fitness community. Um, but we all live for the most part, I guess there's a lot of rural people, but you have, you know, your, your actual physical location of neighbors and speaking to being useful, something that I think a lot of women struggle with, but was a helpful reminder for me is think about how you feel when you help someone else. Think about how you feel when you bring someone a meal after they've lost a loved one or had a baby, right? You feel really good about that. You feel good when you volunteer at a shelter or um, in animal rescue or whatever that may be, right? So what you have to remind yourself as the receiver of that help is you're giving other people an opportunity to fill their own cup when they help you. Your community, your neighbors... They want to help. So you have to let them. And I think another thing about finding community is making sure that it's a positive space. So, you know, I talk a lot about like the healthy mindset as well. And there's a lot of free ways to connect with that community of free mindset. Get a library card. Your library has book clubs. They have support groups. They have game nights. They probably have a divorced ladies night. Libraries are such a great source of community. uh, Just as like, even just a place, maybe it's not something you stick with, but you'll meet somebody. So I think just being brave enough to put yourself out there and go do something. Start walking in your neighborhood. Maybe you have a walk club and maybe it's just you and your next door neighbor. But that walking meditation can be great for you. I just think that there's a million different ways to find community. It's really thinking about what do I need and being brave and reaching out and going for it. And I think, too, when you said that, too, is some of us are uh, extroverts and some of us are introverts. And so it's you, like you said, being brave, because a lot of it, if you're already an introvert and then you're going through something it's going to be a lot more difficult for you to go out and be like, I'd be like, I don't want to make any friends. But like at some point you do need other people around you because if you're just isolating, it's going to get real dark real fast. So you don't want to do that either. But I like what you said. And there's divorce support groups. I know that there's a lot to find on Facebook, but sometimes that can be um, Mandy and I have joined some divorces groups. And sometimes that's more toxic. So be careful about like these groups that you're going into, but maybe you go into a divorce group and there's one person that you just kind of 
connect with and you're like, hey, that's the person that you kind of you take it offline a little bit. But yeah, I think there's so many free resources. Just have to Google Google and find out too what you can do if there's nobody around you. But yeah, you can go down a toxic road. You can. And I and I love also to piggyback on that, the fact of being the recipient and being open to being a recipient because you don't know what the person who's gifting you that gift, you don't know what they've been through and who carried them. And so they're, they're paying it for it. I remember being with the kiddos and it must have been written all over my face. And the lady behind me paid for my groceries. And I was like, I, I broke down in the middle of, I don't remember what grocery store it was, but I just broke down and she was like, honey, you're going to be okay. Let me do this for you. And I was like, no, but it's, it's junk, you know, it's kid food. I felt bad. But at the same time, I don't know what she had been through to, to receive that. And then you have to remember that as you see others going through a hard space to pay it forward as well. Cause I think that's how that, that circle keeps going. It is those little things. I have a fun story. Maybe, um, maybe he'll hear this. Maybe he's a listener. I don't, I don't know. Drew Bledsoe lived in this area at the time of my divorce and he was at the same grocery store as me, Mandy. This is what sparked that memory for me. And those two, I had those two little boys and this big cart of groceries and he followed me out and he loaded my groceries for me as I was buckling my kids into their car seats. And even just that tiny little kindness of him going out of his way to see the same thing. I mean, I was worn down. I was worn out. I you know, couldn't handle one more question from the kids. And so him just doing that for me while I was occupying them was so you, like, it's that's part of the mindset though. Like you have to see that mm-hmm. like you feeling not even just to receive it, but like to fully receive it. And like, Ag- agreed. Drew, go Drew. All right. <laughs> and it does, it does make a huge difference to have friends that have been through a divorce too, because some people just don't get it and that's fine. How would they get it? If they've never been through it, they're not going to get it. But It is good to have like a friend that you can, because you just, sometimes we just need validation. And so you feel like you're the only one going through this. Like there's no way anybody has it harder than you have at that time. They just don't get it. And you just have that one friend that's like, same thing happened to me. And I did. And you're like, oh, yes, yes, that did happen. You know? I do. I I remember, Amanda, I think I was standing in line at a function and you were further up ahead. And I remember looking at you. And I think that's when I learned from someone that you weren't going through a hard time. And I remember looking at you and I, I distinctly remember going, she is handling this so gracefully. Look at her. She's smiling. She's talking to strangers. Like it makes me want to cry because I distinctly remember watching you and going, God, look at her. She's going through hell. And I didn't know because I was I was married at the time, didn't know I was going to go through a divorce. But it's those little things that I think the universe plants in your head that when you start going through it and you go back and like remembering Amanda, she handled it with grace, he handled it with grace, Mandy. So when people look at you, they don't think you're a hot freaking mess. Be Amanda Dewey, handle it with grace. So thank you for putting that out into the universe as well. I don't even think you knew you were doing that. I do. I appreciate you saying that. And and obviously it wasn't, you know, rainbows and, and unicorns. I mean, it was, it was absolutely one of, one of the darkest times of my life because I mean, we haven't mentioned this, but I was also like in my divorce, um, going through bankruptcy. I had a college degree, but I wasn't working. So figuring out what my, like how I was going to make enough money as a fitness professional, which is their podcast, um, how I was going to, you know, take care. Like there was a lot. Okay. So there was a lot, but it's interesting to me and and super meaningful. And I won't cry. Joey knows I'm a crier um, that you say that though, because that was very much the beginning for me of making a commitment in my life to share the hard times of my life And just the same promise that I made my kids as far as like, I refuse to let this, this one failure or dark time or whatever, I refuse to let that be my downfall. 
And in fact, I'm going to let it be my turning point of rising, right? I made that promise to myself and to my boys. But at that same time, I made that promise to, I mean, I can't call it my community, but to essentially to my community that like, if I could inspire one person that like, your divorce doesn't have to be the end. It can be the beginning of the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just, I got really great advice from an older friend who had been through it, who was like, let you, the rest of your life be the revenge that you want. And I wasn't like necessarily out to get revenge. Cause I was just like, it, it would just, the marriage wasn't meant to be. And it, he's, he's happier now. I'm here. Like it's all great. But in that moment, that piece of advice to make this your revenge, nobody's going to suffer if you choose to let this ruin you, except for you and your kid. And it was just that simple accepting that fact that drove me to be like, no, I'm going to make this the best. Like, I'm going to have the best life. I'm going to get everything I want out of this life because I know what it looks like when I'm not. And if, if I'm going to put my boys through having a divorced family, then I better make it worth it on the other side than I have. Um, I knew she was going to cry. I knew it. My oldest is 19. And at 17, um, at Thanksgiving, which is my favorite holiday, that's actually when I got married to my husband. Um, we got married on Thanksgiving, but we usually do like, oh, what are you thankful for? You know, whatever. But we've been doing that for a lot of years. And so two years ago at Thanksgiving, I said, okay, this year, let's just say, say something unexpected. It could be something different that you're grateful for, or, you know, with the little kids, maybe it's something silly or grateful for or whatever. We go around the table, we get to my oldest. And he says, um... He says, I'm grateful that I have divorced parents. And he said, because if I didn't, I wouldn't have my four other younger siblings who I love. And he goes, and I wouldn't have four parents to love me. And I wouldn't have two amazing examples of what a happy marriage could be. And he's like, I am so grateful for my divorced parents. That was it. Stop it. Right? See, like, that's cry worthy. I'm going to be an emotional. That, that's cry worthy, right? That is so. Okay. So, first of all, your son obviously is a, a very smart kid because not all kids see that, but it is kind of anyone who's listening or watching now, Amanda, cry her face off. No, yeah. Fix your makeup. Um, that it that they are somebody could be going through a really dark time listening right now, but it's it's what you make of it. It's how you're going to make this. Like you can recreate your like you create your life after this. You know you have a whole new. It's a do over. It's a start over process. And look at what can happen now. Does that happen to everybody? No, but that can happen. And my kids not as dramatic, but. My daughter has said the same thing. I love having four parents. I have a ton of grandparents and we have all of this greatness now around us. So they do. I mean, would you rather see two miserable parents or four happy parents? You know, which one is it? And maybe maybe the two parents that got divorced aren't happy in the same room, but you still can see happiness. So I love that, Amanda. I, too. I love that for you. That's awesome. Um. So with, with that said, right, because you know how I am, I like to just, I like to turn that emotion right off. Um, with all this said and all that emotion, we kind of talked about the divorce diet and how you chose the mindset to go the healthy route for yourself and for your kids, right? And, and create this life for yourself. Not to say that, you know, like Mandy, what happened to you with losing weight is wrong, you know? Maybe your She's mindset. body's shaming. I am. Uh, but maybe, you know, maybe your mindset, you just didn't have that at the moment. Because I think we all have, I mean, I'm not a therapist. 
but I go to a lot of therapy <laughs> every other week, in fact. So when you, when you have, I think we all have this fight or flight in us and neither one is wrong. I think it's just a, goes back to being a caveman and we have fight or flight. And I think at one point you probably, uh, Amanda just went into fight mode and maybe, I don't know, maybe there's a therapist who's listening with Drew Bledsoe, but like would maybe it was like a, a, a flight thing. Like you retreated and you were taking care of other people and then you just don't eat or whatever it is. But to try to, at this point, if anyone's listening, who is kind of going through that, where they literally can't put food in their mouth, like they just feel sick that they can't do it. If they could switch their mindset to be more of a mindset, like I have to eat today. It's important that I feel my body. It's important that I do these things in the long run. So um, with that said, though, Amanda, fitness for people is, t- is hard, And it's like for people thinking about right now, if they're if they're not healthy, whatever size they are, like I think the three of us, especially sitting here as fitness professionals, as well as um, gone through a divorce and Mandy and I being in the divorce business now. But we're we're all fitness professionals as well. The three of us never care what people's sizes are. We're not those type of fitness professionals. We we're all three of us are all different shapes and sizes. Right. And. Um, so not that, but there's people out there that could be skinny. They could be, you know, whatever, whatever you consider. Do you know that there's midsize now? Did you know that's a thing? There's plus size and midsize, which I don't Hmm. think that, I don't think there should be any size, like any category of a size anyway, but, um, whatever, whatever you are, if you're not, if you don't eat well and you don't move your body for anybody who's not doing those things, it's overwhelming to think to start those things. So uh, healthy, healthy, and I'm doing air quotes, lifestyle is very difficult for people. So, and, and, and also you're going through a divorce, uh, you ain't got no money most of the time, right? So you're like, vegetables are expensive. Everything's expensive. It's overwhelming to think about getting healthy For you, Amanda, when you were going through it, how did you, how did you even, how'd you get healthy? Yeah, I think that that's a key that started then. And I continue to preach it right now because I think, unfortunately, one of the most awful things about the health and fitness industry is it makes a lot of money on keeping people confused and keeping them feeling shame. And you know, maybe my downfall as a fit influencer is I am not going to work from a space of creating shame. And I'm also not going to complicate it and keep you confused. I probably um, am less popular as a fit influencer because I tell the truth and the truth doesn't necessarily make a lot of money. And the truth is canned vegetables and frozen vegetables contain every bit as much as nutrition as the organic vegetables at your farmer's market. You know, it, it doesn't have to be expensive. Um, when, when my boys were little and we joke about it to this day, um, a really inexpensive protein, as you may or may not know, is tuna, right? But a lot of kids maybe don't like it. So I used to call it shark meat. So my kids would eat a lot of shark meat um, <laughs> or dinosaur meat. And I would, um, you know, and we'd, we also didn't have a lot in the fridge or in the pantry. So it wasn't like there were alternatives. Like to a certain degree, kids are going to eat what they're given if they truly don't have anything else. Obviously, I know there are exceptions to that with different like food issues and that kind of thing, but just generally speaking, right? So uh, I, you know, I think, do you guys have Aldi in Massachusetts? Oh yeah, we do have one. We have one. Like there are more inexpensive places to grab protein and then like I said, canned vegetables, you know, simple things like that. Just finding ways uh, to make eating healthy a l- more affordable, right? I did not. I, I mean, I was literally shoestring budget and, you know, we kept it simple. Nothing fancy, but it worked, you know, chicken, vegetables, tuna, um, you know, we did what we could to make it work. And then one great way to get a free gym membership is to become an instructor. 
But in lieu of that, when I was, I think I mentioned, I was just starting in my fitness journey. It started with me wearing a pair of tennis shoes that were not running shoes at all. They were probably fashion sneakers, if I'm being honest. Putting on a pair of fashion sneakers and a sweat suit from Walmart and running. Just went outside and ran in my neighborhood. You know, I didn't have, I didn't have a fitness tracker. Didn't have a step tracker. Didn't know particularly how far I was going. I looked at the clock before I left and I looked at the clock when I came back. So I knew I was running for like, I don't know, 20 to 30 minutes or something like that. And I would do some crunches and it can be that simple. And in doing so, then I started meeting people. That's actually how I, that's actually how I got into the fitness industry is I was on a walk. Uh, one day and ran into someone else who was on a walk with their young child who turns out was a fitness instructor and she invited me to a class and the rest is history. But it can be very simple and inexpensive. Walking is the greatest form of exercise out there. It's readily available to any of us who don't have any physical uh, differences. We can walk and we can get out there and do that. And in doing so, you'll probably meet somebody as well. So there's a lot of affordable ways to stay healthy. And then I mentioned that library card. I'm going to mention it again. If you're going to get your mind healthy, you don't have to have a Kindle. You don't have to have, you know, a book membership or anything like that. You can just go to the library and go to Spotify, listen to a good podcast for your mindset. You know, this one, my extra feel every day. Yeah. I love that. No, I love that you did that. For my body, Joey, I know you've mentioned that my journey was completely, not completely different, but different. Um, My body reacts to stress and I drop immediately. I mean, it just, I can keep everything the same and my body just, I went from, and I'm not scared to share this. I went from 155 pounds. My lowest was 128. And that's with clothes on in the middle of the day. So we all hear that you weigh yourself first thing in the morning with nothing on after you use the restroom. Well, this was in the middle of the day, fully clothed, 128 pounds. And that's when I got scared. My belly button started to change. And your belly button changes when you're pregnant, right? Because you have something, you're growing a child. But when you lose that much weight, your belly button changes as well. And when my belly button started to become unrecognizable to me, I started to worry. I was eating correctly. I was exercising. And I think one of my coworkers put her hands on my hips because I wasn't, I couldn't afford new workout clothes. So the Vandex pants were falling off, but I couldn't buy new ones. And I knew the weight would come back once all this stress was over. But she put her hands on me and she could rub and bump my, um, did you just give a thumbs up? I did. I did. Mine is all full of the emojis. Um, but she could run her thumbs up and down my hip bone. And it was, it was like, okay, maybe something's got to change. But I was doing all the right things. I was eating healthy. I was exercising. It was the level of stress. And, and that, I think, Amanda, is when I turned to getting my mind right because I was on that hamster wheel, sleeping at night, which was adding to the weight loss. But I, I did some research, and it says that... Um, when you're going through a very stressful time, it is not uncommon to lose 10 to 15% of your overall body, um, body weight. But I think that's too much. I think it's too much. And then I think for others of us, I read another research in the U.S. News Health that said that going through a divorce is one of the second most stressful things right behind losing a spouse to death. And as I said earlier, my divorce was one of my darkest times. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. It, <laughs> I haven't gone through. I agree. It's hard. And it said that um, controlling what you eat sometimes is the one thing that you're in control of in this space where you are not in control of anything. Right. So I wish I hadn't gone through what I went through because when you try to go shopping, when you have that extra money and you're like, gosh, these jeans that are just falling off, don't cut it anymore. I, I need a pair of jeans that fit. And they're like, oh, honey, you're a zero. And I'm like, I've never been to zero in my life. I'm a solid eight, 10. Something's wrong. 
right? And being underweight is sometimes more dangerous than being overweight. So I think at that point, I, I don't, I already knew all the answers. So it was like for me to get in, plugged in with the health professional was harder for me to accept that when I really needed to seek the help and guidance. Because you are but, a health professional. So you, yeah, it was hard for you to get help. It was hard for me to get help. You know, the great, the greatest coaches have a coach. Therapists have therapists. Personal trainers should have personal trainers. Like, it's true. Yeah. Yeah, it does. But I just, I just wanted to address that, Joey, because I know you had teased about my, about my journey, but it was scary. It wasn't, it wasn't fun. Um, it was terrifying for me because to not ever see yourself that little. And it did something to my head because now that I know that I've been that little, any other weight is too much. Oh, so it messes, it, yeah, it that, messes with your head. Yeah. 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 And yeah. Everyone always says that too, even, even without a divorce. And the three of us have probably been through this a million times where we were on stage for fitness or been in fashion shows. We were in the, we were in, uh, I don't know if you guys remember Jeff, but he, Jeff was a friend of mine too in the fitness industry. He said, we're in Hollywood fitness. We're not in regular fitness. This is Hollywood fitness. So we've all kind of gained these eating disorders. And once you see your body go down to something small, you get messed up. We were in Hollywood fitness 10, 15 years ago before strong. And wow, I yes. the- or strong was what fitness was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or we had, and now I may agree with you, Joey, that we don't need the labels of plus size and mid size, whatever, but it's certainly better than one size, which is when we were all in fitness. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. One size and it was not healthy. <laughs> yeah. And I think, and also with the divorce, Mandy, like you were saying, your body just automatically loses weight. For a lot of us, we just automatically gain weight. It just comes on. Even if I feel like my eating is the same, the stress all gets held in your belly. So our bellies would go up too. So it could go either way and it's dangerous for your weight to fluctuate is just dangerous anyway. So like you said, like you got small and it's super, sc- you look scary. Not, not to say like, oh, you looked like you looked like you were stressed. Like when I saw you, I was like, she is going through something. Yes. And I remember at that time they needed new headshot. And I wrote our, our corporate office. And I was like, can you just, can you just change the background in mine? I really, I'm not in my smiles, not there. My smile's not there, y'all. Y'all are going to get this headshot of me. I'm going to look like Skeletor. If anybody remembers what Skeletor is, mm-hmm. y'all better remember what Skeletor is. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to look like Skeletor. And my smile's just not, it's, it's absent. It's not there. And she got the copy of it. And she was like, yep, we're going to see what we can do with the old one. And I was like, thank yeah. you. It's a tough time. It really is. And I don't think anybody... I don't think anybody knows what somebody's going through internally. And they, and it's, it, there's so much going on that you're not thinking at the moment. You, like you said, Mandy, it took you a little while, but then you were like, okay, wait a second. I'm a little too skinny here. Like something's up, (laughs) but it, all this is going on. There's so many things going on in the divorce besides just your, you know, if you are my kids, okay. I, that's just one piece of it. You're like, am I going to be okay? Am I going to live in the gutter? Am I like, well, there's so many things going, and you're fighting with your spouse. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I, I know that, I know that some people are very amicable and I actually was, I was lucky enough to be pretty amicable. We got along really well, but that doesn't mean that it was fantastic. We were still not getting along. We weren't married anymore, you know? So there's so much going on. And sometimes the last thing in you know, because especially as moms, you put yourself last. And so you're thinking, okay, well, I, who cares if I'm getting smaller or bigger, or I'm not healthy, or I'm not moving my body. I have to take care of everybody else and make sure everybody else is okay. And uh, like you said, at one point you saw Amanda in line and you're like, she's holding it together, but she was probably completely shattered inside. Um, So that's a, that's a big weight to carry as well. If you're, because I'm the type of person who, if you say, how are you doing? I'm just going to say good because I would never want you to worry if I'm not okay. So I always have to, you know, act like I'm good. And that's, 
that's a heavy weight to carry around. I think that that's, you're touching on something so super important though, whether you're going through a divorce or not, is there tends to be this martyr, martyrdom, I guess, amongst women, moms, et cetera, of like, I'll just do it, putting, you know, putting yourself last or like putting, putting the woman on a pedestal who does everything for everybody else, but, you know, isn't necessarily taking care of herself and, just to kind of circle back to where we started when I knew that this was going to be my reality. I was going to go through a divorce and start my life over. I mean, I think there's like a biblical reference. I'm not really a Bible girl, but you know, you have to think about like, if what are you going to build your foundation on? You know, and if I'm the foundation from which my, my children are going to grow for the, what the rest of my life is going to grow with all the people that I have the power, the opportunity to influence in one way or another through my platform and fitness, right? I have this opportunity to be a foundation for myself, for my kids, for my future family, for my business, for everything, right? Am I going to build it on some janky ass looking chipped up raw that's fallen apart and then try to build something beautiful from that? Or am I going to try to find the best, like the keystone, like the place where the foundation that everything else is built on is going to be strong and safe and together? And I get it. It's it, it may feel like asking like for a lot to to be that thing that's put together, but a lot of times, like over the years, I ask, well, what's the alternative? Because if the alternative is building off of something that's super duper not fundamentally sound, I mean, my alternative isn't so great. So I'm going to do the work to make sure that that foundation, that everything else in my life is going to be built on is okay, which means I cannot be a martyr. I can't. It's not selfish to hand your kids off for 30 or 45 minutes so you can exercise. We know that that exercise is going to get our body right. We know it's going to help get our mind right. It is not asking too much to tell your kids to go to bed and stay to bed so I can have my wind down time and either, you know, read a book that's going to help my mindset, listen to that podcast or just zone out for 30 to 45 minutes because that is my time to take care of me, right? It's it's not asking too much to go to bed at a reasonable hour so I can get up the next day and get myself ready for all the challenges that we know are coming our way. So while I think there's this tendency to like, put on a pedestal, the martyr, what really the mindset shift there needs to be put on a pedestal. The the woman who is willing to go, I need this so I can do all this for everyone else. It's that mindset, like I'm going to take care of me so I can take care of you. So so true. So, so true. Marriages, friendships, parenthood, work. I, I mean, it really applies to all areas, in my opinion. And then, and also, I think, well, if in Mandy's case, if she's eating right and doing all the things, knowing when to, like, seek help, help, like, help, help, not just friends, not just, you know, because I think it gets to a point where you need professional help, doctors or yeah. nutritionists or a psychologist, Some there has to be a point. And actually, now that we're talking about this and we're, the friends that you didn't know you needed, we're telling you now to go get help. Don't let it get to this point. Yeah, don't let it get to that point. I think it was my father who one day standing out by the car said, um, girlfriend, you got to put on some weight. He said, if not, I'm stepping in. And it's like, oh, when daddy steps in, you know, it's serious. Yeah. You so you can get sick. And so when my dad, who isn't a health professional whatsoever, I mean, sweet man, but knows a little, can do a lot of research on his own and probably was doing this research behind, behind the scenes. Um, but it's, it's when 
those who who look at you and and know that you're going through the muck, but can see the physicality of what it's doing to your body, hair falling out, um, losing sleep, dark circles under your eyes, belly button changes, which you should only know, but it's, it's, I want to say it's when you go silent is when those that care about you the most will hear you the loudest. And that can be with their eyes as well. Cause I think other people in the, in the fitness industry, I think it was said to me, um, Oh my gosh, maybe, but you didn't know that you had 20 pounds to lose. And I was like, if you only knew the hell that I was going through, like, so we live in this world of what we called Hollywood fitness. And those comments get said because it's, it's where we lived. Right. And so we have to battle. And, and even if you're not in the fitness world, you have to battle and put up those boundaries and know that, you know, be like a duck, let it roll off your back, but fight your, fight your war. But those, there are people on your side for sure. You don't have to fight it alone. Not at all. Not at all. So we can wrap up, right? Or do we have, I think that's it. Yeah. So Amanda, now what would you, if you had to, if you had to, I'm putting you on the spot now. If you had to just kind of bottom line it for us before we wrap everything up, what would be your bottom line to all of it? Because we're talking, we just talked about kind of everything, but you did say that there was, for you, there was a light, but somebody, somebody listening right now didn't have Drew Bledsoe helping them in their car. Like where, where are they at right now? How do they get out of this shit storm with their health? Well, with their health? Or with, with everything, their health and wellness. Well, step one. So there's like, you know, it kind of depends on who you're talking to, right? But I think I would say rescue your own damn self, right? No one's coming to fix this for you. So if, if you're the one that's going to have to do it, Make sure, make damn sure that if you're the one that has to do it, if you're the one that has to rescue yourself, that you have the best equipment available to you, right? And that is, it starts with your mindset and your mind. And then if we can get that right and we can get that in shape, you know, do whatever you need to do, outsource it, you know, whether that's whatever that may be, all the things we covered over the last hour, right? Get that mind right. The body will, by taking care of the body, because that is your vessel, that is, that is your boat through the storm, right? That is your vessel that's getting you from A to Z every single day, your mind and your body. If that's who has to do the rescuing here, make sure you get it right. Because when that's right, not everything's going to be perfect, but you're going to be so much better equipped to handle all the storms that are kind of come your way. I love it. And, and the, having that control over that one, you can't control everything that's going to happen and you have to relinquish control on a lot of things, but you have control of this one thing. And like you said, your revenge life now, granted, it's not going to be like my revenge life. And everyone's like, Oh, you made it. But you, in that mindset of, Forget the revenge body. I hate revenge body. Revenge life is what you're going for. A better life for yourself. So I love that. Amanda, you're okay. I'll keep you. I'll keep you. You're just okay. We I loved you. you. I'm just kind of glad you came here today. That's all. Yeah. That was amazing. Thank you so much. So uh, just to, anything else that you wanted to add, Mandy, before? No, I'm just, I'm so thankful that we were able to cover this early on because I think that it's, it's important. And I love every, yeah, it is. It's important for everyone, for everyone. Everyone should know these things. So if, if you want to follow Amanda and we all feel like you should, she is Amanda is Amanda L Dewey, right? There's an L in there. Don't forget that L. There is Amanda L Dewey on Instagram. And then uh, like you're a Facebooker. Uh, Amanda Dewey Fitness. Okay. If you're a Facebooker. Yeah. 
It's a different breed, different breed of people. And, you know, like TikTok, that's a thing, you know? I, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, it's not, I watch reels like a, like an adult. I mean, oh no, come on. Come to, <laughs> come to the dark side with me. We need to live together again so I can show you how to wind down with a little TikTok. I'm an adult on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so so follow Amanda because you'll get great tips from her daily. There's always posting. So if you want to know more about how to get healthy, you can reach out to her. She has, like we said, she has her online fitness community. So you don't have to be in Texas. You can be from anywhere. So make sure you follow her. And then for us, if you are still here listening or watching, that means you made it to the end and we're still friends. Apparently, we haven't offended anyone yet. So we would love if you would follow us on Instagram and maybe give us a like, a co- do something. Hit a button. Tell a friend. Hit a pit some sort of a bench. Your call to action today is to hit a button. Hit a button. And that's all we have for today. We will see you next time on My Ex Appeal. Thanks to our listeners, sponsors, and our lawyers on my ex appeal and everything.